Well, I don't want to kiss it. Well, almost. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for making the drive up here. We, um, we're here because our God is the God of salvation. Salvation belongs to the Lord, which is what Jonah proclaimed in the belly of the fish before he was, you know what happened. <laughs> so that's why we're here. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And we're here because God, in his graciousness, has saved Samantha. And how did God do that? Through the gospel. And the gospel is good news. Yes. It's the best news we've ever heard. Yes. If you've never heard it, well, let me tell you. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> so you understand the good news, we need to know the bad news first. Yes. Right? Because if you don't know the bad news, the good news, you won't understand is why it's good. So the bad news, according to the word of God, is that as the prophet Isaiah preached, we have sin, and that sin has made a separation between us and and our God. As Romans chapter 3 says, all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. Um, and that is without exception. Um, in Romans 3, Paul wrote that there is no one who does good. There is no one who is righteous. No one who seeks after God. No one. No one. Um, and in Romans 6, the Apostle Paul wrote that the wages of our sin is death which means that because of our rebellion and sin against God, the just punishment that we deserve from the Lord is death. And if it weren't in the Bible, I wouldn't believe it and I wouldn't preach it, is that what we deserve is an eternity in hell with no second chance. Um, and so that's what we, that's the bad news. We were made by God to be in a relationship with God, to love Him and to worship Him with all that we have and all that we are, but instead... What we, have, what we have done is we have sinned against him. We have broken his law. We have hated God. And so that's our predicament. And so now the good news makes sense. In that God so loved the world, John 3.16, right? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will never perish but have eternal life. And so God has so loved the world, so loved us, that he sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, into this world to live a perfect sinless life to die on the cross in our place for our sins to satisfy the righteous justice and wrath of god that he was buried but on the third day he was risen resurrected from the dead so that if you simply repent of your sin and believe in jesus you place your trust in him that he is lord and savior you will be forgiven of your entire debt you'll be reconciled to god You'll be given the gift of eternal life, and you will finally experience salvation belongs to the Lord. And you will experience true joy and true peace. And Samantha, you can see, is experiencing that. <laughs> this is not joy because just because of baptism. This is joy because of the Jesus who saved her. And she's doing this because she loves Jesus. And this is what Jesus has commanded her to do, is to be baptized in his name. So, one more thing. What is baptism? What are we doing? So, baptism does not save. Um, baptism will not save Samantha. And one reason we know baptism doesn't save is because when Jesus was dying on the cross, the thie, one of the thieves beside him trusted in Jesus. And Jesus said to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. Yeah. And he died apart from baptism. And he was saved. So baptism doesn't save. But what does save? Well, it's through faith alone in Jesus alone that saves. And baptism is for those who have already been saved. And baptism is a picture and it's a seal of what God has already done in Samantha's life. So when, when Samantha goes down into the water, that will represent that before God intervened in your life, you were dead in your sin underwater. You were dead in God's judgment. You were drowning apart from God. And when Samantha's lifted out of the water, what that will be a picture of is how when God saved her, God rose her spiritually from death to life. 
And it also is a picture that points forward to when the Lord Jesus returns and um, all Christians, all believers will be raised from the dead. So it points forward to that too. And when she's raised from the dead, or when she's raised from the water, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. When she's raised from the water, that'll also be a picture of how she's died to the old way of living in sin and for sin. And she is a new creature in Christ. She's been raised up in Christ spiritually. And she's now wanting to live for the praise of God's glory. So that's the picture and that's the seal that baptism is. So, am I done talking? I think so. All of that's really, all of that's important, right? So, Samantha, I am uh, going to invite you. Actually, I'll come over there. Yeah. I think enough. That's okay. You can sit. Save your strength. All right. I have a few questions for Samantha. To confirm your faith in Christ, we already know. Just the case. We're crossing our <laughs> T's, out of your eyes, and we also want to confirm that you, in fact, want to be baptized. Right. So, you've seen these questions. So here they are. Do you believe in the God of the Bible, who exists as one being of three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all of whom are fully and truly and forever God? Yes, I do. <laughs> and do you affirm that you've turned away from living a lifestyle devoted to sin and that you have turned towards the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to him and trusting in him alone, who died on the cross for your sins and was raised from the dead? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> and it is, is it your desire still today that in obedience to Christ, no other reason, that you wish to be baptized as you commanded? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes, my sister Natalie. I don't have enough breath, but I have a little something written not too, too long. And then after that, I'd like to repent. Oh, I've got a big voice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> These are Sam's words. I just wrote them for her. Before I surrendered to Christ, I had always been a believer in Christ. I've always yearned to be closer to Christ and follow more in the steps. I recognize that I've veered off the path of righteousness at certain times in my life and am blessed and grateful to, God, to have had the opportunity to repent. I have not, I'm sorry, I can't understand my own writing. I have not found meaning, I have now found meaning and acceptance in my relationship with the Lord. The time has come to be at one with the Lord, as he is my salvation, my king, and my I am. Before my baptism, I want to repent my sins. Heavenly Father, I ask for your forgiveness. Bless me and those around me, Father. Thank you for my heavenly family. Thank you for my blood-related family. Thank you for understanding me all these years and willing me to be able to be forgiven, Father. You are my I am, and I'm so happy to be baptized today. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I'm ready. Oh, my goodness. I'm jumping in back up. She's done. Lori's not here, I know, but the show has got to go on. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, you'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's refreshing. <laughs> <laughs>
Samantha, based on your confession that you have turned away from living in sin, and that you have placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, who died and was raised for you, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.